Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 69. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 11, video 69, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our last video in our simulation chapter, chapter 11, and it's our last video for this BI 348 class, and we have a great example. We have a Baseball World Series example for how to use simulation. Now, the A's and the San Francisco Giants are going to be playing, and our goal is to calculate the probability that the Oakland A's will win the Baseball World Series and calculate the average number of games that it will take to win the series. Now here's some of our variables up here. Trials, N, that's seven World Series games, will define a success as Oakland A's win one game in one try. Probability that A's win one game, well, it changes each time. Look at this, 0 0.65, 0 0.52, 0 0.475, 0 0.48. So we can't use a binomial experiment. Now, these probabilities, where did they come from? Well, if it's the Oakland A's, you know, Billy Bean and his statistics pals put a lot of time and effort into calculating each one of these things like starting pitchers, matchups, hitting, on base percentage, home field advantage, and many other variables. But each one is different. Our random uncertain variable will be a binary variable. X, it'll be just that the A's win a given game. Number of successes to win the Baseball World Series where you need a total of four. All right. I'm going to calculate the complement here, even though we really don't need it. That's the probability that the Giants will win any one of these particular games. And now, here's x1 to x7. So we're going to have seven different variables and a random 0 or 1 for each one of these games. 0 means they didn't, the A's didn't win. 1 means they win. So we're going to use equals the if function, and we've used the RAND function many times in Chapter 11 here for simulation. The RAND is an argumentless function that will calculate a number between 0 and 1. And I'm going to ask the question, hey, random probability of winning, are you greater than the probability that we think the A's will win? If it's greater than that, then we'll say comma for value of true 0. That means you the A's did not win. Otherwise, 1. They won. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send that down. Now, if I hit the F9 key to randomize, you can see we get a different set of zeros and ones. A's lose or A's win. Now I need to calculate the cumulative total. So down here, it should be 1. When we get down here, it should be 2. And finally, it should be 3. So I use equals the sum function. And I need to say E17 colon close parentheses. We need an expandable range here, so I'm going to put my cursor and touch the first E17, F4 to lock it. That expandable range, Control Enter, and copy it down. Any particular cell, you can see, sure enough, the sum function is expanding and adding the total games that the A's have won cumulatively. Now if I hit F9, you can see, there it is. Four wins mean they won the World Series in game five. Now we want to come down here and think about a simulation formula, because again, we have to answer both of these questions. And I'm going to get a little trickier. I'm just going to look up four within this range right here using the match function. Equals match is a lookup function. The lookup value will be, I'm looking up four, comma, within this lookup array right here comma. And we need to use exact match. Now, the advantage and the beauty of exact match for this example is that if there are duplicates over here, because sometimes our formula will show 4, 4, 4, it will only pick up the relative position of the first number 4. So again, match will look through a range and tell you the relative position of the item it's looking up. That means the number 4. So when I Control Enter. Right now, look at that. Match found 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the A's won in the fifth game of the World Series. And the match function is never going to report the wrong answer because it's only going to find 
the first number 4 because we have exact match. Now when we hit F9, there will be some cases like this one right here where match doesn't find a 4. That NA is going to mean they didn't win the World Series. Now we want to copy this formula down. We have Control down or we have our 10,000 simulation numbers there that we're going to need for our formula or are just sitting there to trick the data table because we're going to copy this formula down. Highlight, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. And now to copy this down, we go to Data, Data Tools, What If Analysis, Data Table, or we can use the keyboard Alt DT for Data Table. We do not have a row input. We have a column input. And we're going to trick the data table feature by clicking an empty cell. Now, because this empty cell is not connected to that formula right there, data table will try to substitute each one of these numbers in. But because that formula is not connected, it just won't work. All data table will do is copy our simulation formula down. And when I click OK, instantly. Now, as we saw in earlier videos, we use the data table feature because in general, it'll calculate faster than a formula with lots of randomizing variables in it. Now, look at this in our first simulation. The A's won in five times. Then the second simulation, they won in six times, four times, didn't win, didn't win, didn't win, and so on. Now, how are we going to deal with the NAs up here? Because we have to calculate probability that the Oakland A's win the World Series, and then average number of games it took. Well, let's first do the probability that the A's, Oakland A's win the Baseball World Series. I'm going to actually use the count function. Now, the count function is programmed to only count numbers and ignore everything else. So I'm going to click on the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Close parentheses. And I didn't count how many simulation values I have. So I'm going to divide by, and I'm going to use rows. Rows tells me in a range how many rows there are. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, close parentheses. And that formula will calculate the probability based on this series of individual probabilities for winning games that the Oakland A's will win the World Series. If I hit F9, you can see it's changing each time. Now, the next calculation is the average number of games it will take to win the World Series. Well, because we did our match formula and copied it down, we can just take an average of all these. However, the errors will mess up a straight average function. So instead of using average, like we've seen two times already in this chapter 11, we'll use the aggregate function. And we're going to use the first argument, number 1, to tell it, please do the average calculation, comma. And unlike the other two times in this chapter when we used aggregate, we chose ignore nothing. But here we want to choose ignore error values. So this is a way of using aggregate to calculate number 1 function, which is average, by ignoring errors, number 6 for options, comma. And then the reference. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, close parentheses, and Enter. Now if I hit F9, 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 now we have our two calculations based on individual probabilities that the Oakland A's will win a particular game against the Giants. We've calculated the probability that the Oakland A's will win and the average number of games. Wow, that was a lot for Chapter 11, a lot of amazing tricks for simulation. We saw a bunch of different randomizing formulas for different variables that were based on particular probability distributions. And we saw that each time we use the data table feature and an empty cell to create our many simulated values. All right, that's it for BI348 class. We'll see you next video series and video class.